Welcome everyone to German Tour Views. Today we're going to take a look at the Vha Speed E electronic screwdriver with part number 32480. I've had this for a couple of months now and really wanted to get some time into it before I did the review. There have of course been plenty of other screwdrivers that have much the same functionality such as the Bosch Go. The difference in the Speed E is that it is the first unit that I can recall that actually looks and feels like a regular screwdriver. You can also use the Speed E like a regular screwdriver, up to 8 Nm of torque, without any damage to the internal clutch mechanism. While the Speed E has been available in Europe for some time, it was only introduced in the USA a couple months ago. Going into a couple of differences between the international versions and this set, there are three versions of the international set, which differ in the number of bits and torque adapters that are available with them. The set that is available in North America is similar to the first one, but has a different selection of bits from this one. I am glad that they toned down the packaging as anyone has seen the box in the international version comes in. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Included are the flyer, a manual, and the Speed E set in a VHA branded LBOX Mini. First taking a look at this flyer which gives an overview of the features of the tool along with an interesting cutaway diagram showing the internal construction. There is clearly one contradictory statement here indicating that it is hermetically sealed and then listing the ingress rating of IP44 which is far from being sealed from the elements so I think someone messed up there. On the second page we have a list of all of the slimline bits that are available with all their part numbers. There's also a listing of the easy torque control adapters which I hope to someday get to reviewing. Next we have the manual which I actually did read through and I wanted to note a couple of things. First it looks like somebody missed the translation for ION as the German word for it is still here in the English section. There's also a note that while this product is intended for professional craftsmen, the one year warranty is not valid for industrial use. Semantically, I really wouldn't know exactly what the difference is between professional use and industrial use. The next note is a dubious warning about the noise levels where they are claiming that the sound pressure level for this product is 70 to 80 dB. Now you'll hear this in a bit, but I don't believe the product is that loud. For comparison, 70 dB is about the noise level of a floor vacuum. Here are the technical specs for anyone who is interested. Now getting into the tool, it is packaged in a VHA branded LBOX Mini, which I confirm mates just fine with the other LBOX Mini units I have. Opening it up presentation wise, it is quite impressive with custom foam insert to fit all the tools and included accessories. Included with the set are the following. The Speed E screwdriver, a VHA branded charger, two 18500 VHA branded batteries, a selection of slimline bits in a small plastic case, and a power supply with a USB port. There's also a slot for an easy torque control adapter which is not included with this set. Looking at the screwdriver portion first, without the battery installed, we can see that it takes up the shape very similar to VHA's normal screwdrivers. It is not exactly the same with the Speed E being a bit longer and thinner than even the largest VHA handle size. The electronic portion of the unit looks to be permanently sealed and given the cost I'm not quite ready at this point to potentially destroy it to see what's inside. The ribbed red portion is a ring switch that can be turned about an eighth of a rotation in either direction that controls the clockwise and counterclockwise rotation of the motor. To get to the battery the cap is unscrewed which does have an o-ring to help against any water ingress. Interesting design choice on how to connect the negative side of the battery to the tool. Instead of using metal threads, they are using two metal tabs and a reciprocating ring to make this connection. A nice touch that most people won't notice is they molded the orientation of the battery directly into the cap. Now taking a look at the battery, first thing that should be noted is that this is an 18500 battery, which is not the same dimensions as the more popular 18650 size. I really wish they would have managed to design the tool with an 18650 in mind, so it must have been some length limitation that forced them to use this particular size. Those two sizes are the same diameter voltage, but the 18650 is 15 millimeters longer. It almost seems like you could use a different cap to adapt to the 18650 format. I have the feeling I might be revisiting this battery issue in the future. Looking at the bits included with this set, they are all from the Slimline product line that includes a molded step for the insulated portion to create a smooth transition to the tip. The sizes you get with this particular set are two square Robertson drives, a Phillips number one and number two, a combination slotted Phillips number one and number two, and a slotted 1.0 and 0.6 millimeters. I do like how they mark the maximum torque rating of each bit style right on the product. It is kind of strange how they're all marked with 28311 which I believe is the part number series for the international version but it doesn't match any of the current part numbers available in North America. Before I power this thing on we'll go ahead and charge the batteries using the included charger. This is a VHA branded charger with a permanently connected USB cable. They did include a USB AC to DC power supply. After plugging it in the only indication that you get that it's actually on is a brief flash of the lights so no indication that it's in standby mode. I'll go ahead and throw the included batteries in the charger for a bit. The manual indicates that the charge time on these is 75 minutes, so I'll come back in two hours just to be sure. 
After coming back, I found that only one of the two lights was marked green. At first I thought there might be something wrong with one of these batteries, but I found regardless of which battery I put on the left side of the charger, it would remain a red charging color indefinitely. I would be interested to know if anyone else is having similar issues or did I just get a bad charger. I have my own universal charger for these type of batteries, so I doubt I would even have used this charger anyway, so it is a little concern at this point. I decided to open it up and inspect the construction. In the bottom half, they have a piece of metal covered with some insulating tape. These metal ballast weights are a common technique to give the unit a little bit more weight and feel a bit more beefy. Looking at the circuit board, it does have a good amount of thermal paste, which I'm guessing is over the thermistor to detect the battery temperature. Nothing really stands out as being poor quality about the design and construction of the board, so I'm not sure why one side is failing to charge properly. So let's go ahead and insert a battery and start testing this thing. Anytime you engage the ring switch, a small single white LED will turn on. The manual indicates that when this LED blinks, it is indicating that there is a low battery condition. The LED is quite bright and really doesn't show up here due to the studio lighting. Attempting to insert a bid, I find my first real issue with the unit. I found that it can be quite hard at times to index these bits because there is no visual or tactile indication on the alignment of the bit. The other issue is that it appears that the only thing holding the bit in is the friction provided by a small rubber o-ring just inside the holder. I think that is why there is quite a bit of play in the bit itself. I feel like that this o-ring will eventually wear out over time and there will be nothing left to really keep it in place. This might be a good time to talk about the insulating properties of this tool. I should note that the only part of this tool that actually has undergone VDE testing are the bladed bits. The electronic screwdriver itself is not tested to withstand the same voltage. I even went back and pulled all of VHA's VDE certifications just to check that and the only ones I could find were for the slimline bits. I guess everything should be alright if the insulation on the blades is not damaged but it is currently undefined on what would actually happen if you touch the screwdriver handle part to a live voltage circuit. Now onto some bench testing of the unit. First thing to note is that the motor is electronically torqued at 0.4 newton meters or about 3.5 inch pounds. Any greater torque applied will cause the motor to stall out. The internal clutch itself can withstand torque up to 8 newton meters or 70 inch pounds without damage. This means you can really only use the electronic portion of the product in very low resistance situations such as taking up the slack on a long screw. Once you hit the torque limit you can of course use the product like a normal screwdriver. However, it can be hard to use it this way without also triggering that ring switch. I feel like anyone who is installing new electrical components would benefit from this tool because most manufacturers will ship products like circuit breakers and terminal blocks with the screws in the fully open position to facilitate installation. Therefore, it would be good for anyone who has to deal with long stroke fasteners on a regular basis. In addition to electricians, people like telco technicians or other low voltage technicians could benefit really from this tool. If you're someone that doesn't encounter these type of situations often, then I feel like you might be a bit disappointed with the feeling that this tool is more of a novelty. I'll give you an example. I need to clean out the coil on this dehumidifier, so I thought the Speed E might work well for this. However, anytime I encountered that self-tapping screw, the electronic portion was useless since the torque required to turn the screw was greater than 0.4 newton meters stall torque. Even when reinstalling the screws, I couldn't use the electric motor, so I ended up just using a regular screwdriver to finish this up. But I also had jobs where the Speed E worked great, like when I was wiring up this external motor starter switch that came with these really extra long screws. So it really does depend on what type of work you run into. One thing I've noticed when using this is that there is quite a bit of setup and teardown effort. Since all of the bits are in this plastic case, it must be removed in order to get to the one you need. Since I don't need the charger and power supply, I decided to rearrange the insert so that the bits can be grabbed and put away much easier. Using some spare foam, I created a prototype for what I may eventually route out of some better quality foam to hold the bits. To summarize, I think the Speed E is a decent tool in only specific applications and trades. It is not a one size fits all tool and really will depend on the type and size of fasteners you run into on a regular basis. Here's a list of recommendations that I would like to see in future revisions or versions of the tool. I would like to see the stall torque increased or made adjustable to allow the tool to be used for fasteners with higher prevailing torque such as self tapping and sheet metal screws. It'd be nice if they offered a version that took an 18650 battery because that's what everybody uses these days. 
I would like to have a more positive locking mechanism for the bits as I have serious concerns about the longevity of the current O-ring based design. This would also improve the large amount of wobble currently observed. And finally, I would like to see a kit that's offered without the charger or power supply. You currently can't buy the Speed E without buying one of these kits, and they all include a charger and power supply. Instead, use this extra space to hold more bits in a more accessible fashion. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that look at the VHA Speed E electronic screwdriver. Check out the link in the description of the four of you. There are also some affiliate links in the description if you feel the urge to pick this unit up. Have a good week, and I'll catch you guys next time.